Welcome back to my channel. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of Mies van der Rohe. It's been a while since I've made a video, but I'm excited about getting back into making these teaching tutorials. Today we're going to look at using Grasshopper and specifically looking at using a data tree to make a loft. A lot of times in Grasshopper, in order for the loft to work properly, we have to set it up using a data tree. So let's get into it. In Rhino, we're just going to make a new file and we're going to look at using the template large objects inches. And we're going to type in the command doc, which is a shortcut for document properties. And we're going to set up our grid line count to 50, minor grid lines every 10 inches, and major grid lines every 5 minor and we'll set our snap spacing to be 10 inches. Okay, we need to make sure that our grid snap is on. So make sure at the bottom of your screen your grid snap is turned on and that you have it set up to endpoint. We're going to make three squares. And I'm going to make layer one current just so that those squares are red and that we can see them better. Okay, using the command rectangle, I'm gonna go ahead and make those three squares. And we're gonna bring those three squares into Grasshopper. And we're gonna do that by using a curve container. And We'll get more into this at some point, but basically all the geometry that is created in Rhino is a curve. And straight lines are curves with no bends. So we're going to choose Curve. I'm going to right click and choose Set Multiple Curves. And then I'm going to select those squares that I drew in Rhino. So now those squares are in Grasshopper. And what I'm going to do is make a copy of them. There is no copy in Grasshopper, so we're using the move. And we're going to move these in a Z direction. And we'll bring out a number slider. Let's try 10. OK, I'd like a little more height than that. so. When I double click, I'm going to try 25. That'll give me a number slider between 0 and 100. OK, so now what I'm trying to do is loft between the bottom and top squares. So let's label our geometry just to make our lives a little easier. I'm going to do this using a scribble. So these are the bottom. squares and then these are the top okay so now if I loft bring out my loft capsule and I plug this in so you see what happens. The top squares, they loft into each other. So it goes from this square to this square to that square. And the same would be true if I do the bottom squares. They loft into each other. Now what I'm trying to do is make a lofted surface between the bottom and the top rectangles. And I'll see, primarily when I'm teaching, I'll see a lot of students. They'll just plug both the bottom and top squares in to the curves uh, to the curves for the loft and then you'll get some you know amazing beautiful geometry that's happening uh, but not what we're looking for and what's happening here is it's just going in order so it's going through the first square second third of the bottom and then going up to the top first second and third so it's just doing those in order and that's because what's the way that the loft is looking at this is it's looking at these as lists. So there's a list of three squares basically. And if we take this 
and we were to plug both of these in. That's all we're seeing is one long list. And what we need for this to work properly is we need to set this up using data trees. So let's look at how we could do that. So I'm just going to delete my loft capsule for a moment. Okay, I'm going to use the capsule graph tree. So I'm going to take the bottom squares, I'm going to graph those. And then I'm also going to take the top squares and graph those. And let's use a couple panels just to better see what we have here. So here is I like to set these up so everything sits on one line, so just making them wide enough. Okay, and well, I can copy and paste that panel. So now what's going to happen is the loft is going to look at this and it's going to take this first list. So a data tree is a list of lists. It's going to take this first list and match it with the first list down here and create a loft. So bottom squares, top square, bottom square, top square, bottom square, top square. So let's see what happens with our loft. Sometimes I'll use the panels directly, but I've found that um, I'll have issues plugging the panels directly in the capsules. So let's plug these two in. And there you have it. So we needed to use a data tree to make the loft correctly. Okay, just a short video to get back into making these teaching tutorials. I hope you liked it. If you like it, please subscribe to the channel and give me a like down below. See you next time.